Don't want to cable a CCTV camera to the outside of your house? Then the Kuao 2K battery powered CCTV camera could be your saviour. It comes with that 2K resolution and PTZ, meaning that you can control the head using just your mobile device. And we get almost a full 360 degrees rotation, as well as 90 degrees tilting up and down. It has an inbuilt speaker on the back, and on the front there's the inbuilt microphone, IR cut, spotlights and IR lights, PIR sensor, status light and the lens. It has two plastic Wi-Fi antennas which feel solidly built. The inbuilt battery can be charged by the micro USB port which is located next to the mounting bracket. This will display a red light when it's charging and a blue light when it's fully charged. It's worth noting that you will get the micro USB cable in the box but you will not receive a wall adapter so you will need to use either one of your own wall sockets or a battery pack to charge it up. On the bottom of the head is a slot for the micro SD card which is compatible up to 120 8GB of storage. The power button and reset button are also under this flap and holding the power button for around 4 seconds will turn it on and a blinking red light will display on the front meaning that it is ready to be set up. And to set it up you will need to install the Kuo app on your mobile device either by searching the play or app store or scanning the QR code which is supplied in the manual. Once installed you will need to create an account by pressing the sign up button at the bottom. Put your email address in and tap to accept the registration agreement and press press next. Give yourself a nickname, put in a password and press done. We do get informed that you can't log into multiple devices with just the one account. Tap the big red plus button, tap on battery camera and now it's time to turn on the camera itself. Tap next on the device power screen and tap next on the reset device screen. And now it's time to join it to your network. Be aware that it will need to be joined to a 2.4 GHz network and it won't work on a 5 GHz one. So for us we need to tap on change Wi-Fi and select our 2.4 GHz one. Put in your Wi-Fi password and press next. Now peel off any film that is on the lens and press next. A QR code will be displayed on your phone and you will use the lens of the camera to scan this code. Once you've done that it takes around 7 seconds for it to join the network and complete the installation and when we press done we get into the app. Physically installing the camera was simple as it was just a matter of peeling off the drilling template and sticking it to the wall. Drill through the three label points on the sticker, install the plugs, Put the mounting bracket over the holes and screw in the three screws. The top part of the bracket sticks out which allows the camera to be slid into place. Give it a push to click it into the mount and you're all set. If you prefer not to install it onto a wall then the mounting bracket gives you the option to install it to a ceiling by screwing in the screws into the top. And when you want to pull the camera down it's just a matter of tilting the camera towards you and upwards and this will detach it from the mount. The Kuo app is very simple to navigate with features being accessible on the main page. Screenshot and record will take a photo or record a video directly to your mobile phone. Intercom allows you to speak into your phone and it will come out of the speaker of the camera. Testing one, two, one, two. This is a test of the speaker. Test of the speaker. Test of the inbuilt speaker. This is the kind of audio you can expect. PTZ allows you to move the head around but remember that it is a battery camera so the more that you do this the quicker the battery will drain. Motion detection gives us lots of useful options where we can adjust the sensitivity of the detection with 10 being the most sensitive and 1 the least. If you have the sensitivity set to the highest then you can expect it to be triggering constantly especially if it's a windy day and you have trees blowing. Alarm interval means that once something has been detected then it won't re-trigger the alarm for 2, 5 or 10 minutes even if motion is detected but you can turn this option off. You can be notified if human motion is detected during the day or night but we did notice that we had some recordings where the cats outside were being picked up. Alert plan lets you set your own days and times when you want notifications to be sent through which is quite a nice feature to have. The alarm area lets you select sections of the frame where if movement does happen in that zone then it will get recorded. The orange areas are what gets picked up but if you don't highlight anything in orange then all motion will get recorded. You can enable the lights and a siren to be activated when somebody walks past the lens but this can only be used during the night. You will get 7 days of free cloud storage. Then there's multiple options you can select once this expires if you wish to continue having your footage stored on the cloud. The app also allows you to share the camera with other people and you can decide if they can only view the camera or have full control. Footage can be played through the history tab on your mobile device and the footage looks to be in good quality. Notifications to your phone work really well and it alerted us every time any movement was detected within a matter of seconds.
When you're live viewing, you can switch from standard definition to HD and it greatly improves the quality, but you will use more bandwidth. There's full time digital zoom available and this works really well, but do expect some loss in quality when you zoom in. You can also remove the memory card out of the unit and plug it into your computer to view the footage. All the videos are in folders for each day and they're MP4 files so they should all play fine. The closer you can get the camera to what you want to monitor then you'll get the better looking footage. One thing that we immediately noticed is that the middle and the left of the frame look to be in focus but anything on the right hand side seems to be blurry and out of focus. We tried cleaning the lens but this issue remained. By default it is set to record footage for 10 seconds and the shooting interval is 2 minutes which means that you will get a 10 second recording and then nothing else is recorded for the next 2 minutes no matter if there is movement. This is to save battery life but I would personally have this permanently set to off so I would miss as little as possible but even with this disabled once the shooting time runs out and it begins to film again you can expect to lose at least five seconds of footage between the two clips. Sensitivity control is something that you will have to have a play around with for your own scenario. Here's an example of me being an absolute hero in saving the cat from off the roof with our sensitivity set at 6. The first clip ends at 10.04 and 25 seconds and then it re-triggers at 10.07 and 11 seconds so we've missed a huge amount of footage. Night footage seems to work well with the option of having it in black and white or colour. When we had it in black and white and we came closer to the lens then it would switch to colour mode most of the time anyway which wasn't a problem for us because it does bring a good amount of colour to the image. I would recommend using this for monitoring a short distance as when we had it monitoring the cars outside it would work fine during the day with it picking up people walking past but at night it just would not trigger when we got near the cars. It would pick up up as we went up and down the path but if we went any further then we just didn't get detected no matter how high we had the sensitivity. Having it installed here for a few days it only picked up movement from vehicles maybe on three occasions so it did do a good job of eliminating those false alarms. The app overall is laid out well but we did have occasions where we tried to play back footage and it said no recordings on this day. To resolve this we had to close the app down and reopen it and then it would play the footage. The battery should last between four to six months if there are between 20 and 30 triggers a day. We had 211 video recordings and our battery was on 73% and this was over a five day period. But bear in mind this was with us playing around with the head and triggering the lights and sirens whilst filming this video. I'm not confident that you would get the four to six months but providing that you keep the triggers below 30 then you should be able to go a few months without charging. And speaking of charging we began charging the camera when the battery dropped to 73% and it took 2 hours and 42 minutes to fully charge. So expect to do an overnight charge if your battery is very low. If charging the battery is not something that you fancy, then check out the video on screen for a solar powered CCTV camera.